the market's still mm -hmm. subdued. A mixed bag, really, when it comes to performance of stocks on the equity side. Um, it's the end of the year. Do you expect anything to change in the trend? Um, no, I'm not, not really. Uh, in fact, um, I expect it to weaken further. Traditionally, what's happened with the equity market is towards the end of the year and the beginning of uh, in January, we see a lot of sell-offs, especially from retail clients, um, meeting, um, holiday, and um, beginning of year obligations. Um, they've been out of the market so far. Um, most of this uh, second quarter, they've not touched the market at all. Retail participation has been minimal. I mean, the market has mostly been left to institutional investors and uh, foreign investors. So um, if, if they come in towards uh, the end of the year and early um, in 2012, we should expect the market to weaken further as they sell off to meet their obligations. All right, we are seeing, though, the shilling significantly improve, trading at 90 shillings, 80 cents today. So monetary policy is having a very positive effect, but it's not enough to lift the markets. Why is that? Um, yes, the shilling is, is performing uh, quite well. Everyone's happy about that. In fact, uh, most people are expecting it to end the year at uh, below 90 levels, trading around maybe levels of between um, 85 and 88, which, which is, I mean, uh, wonderful. Monetary policy has actually taken an effect. I mean, it's act we're actually seeing the results of uh, the policy stance. And um, although liquidity has been very tight, um, I think the payoff in strengthening of a shilling is, is, is worth it. Um, but um, and in, in terms of affecting the market, I think we initially saw the initial euphoria when uh, the shilling began to strengthen. We saw a lot of players come in, but um, basically all the other fundamentals had based were all the same. And um, of course, with interest rates rising, there's a lot of competition from the money market for funds. So a lot of funds are going that way, as you mentioned earlier. Okay, what does this all mean for the fixed income side of the market? Because the one peculiarity of Kenya is as the equity side tanked, we didn't see um, fixed income uh, riding the crest of that wave. People didn't see comfort on the in fixed income side of the market. So um, inflation still high, the shilling improving. What would that mean for this particular aspect of the market? Um, basically, I think what, um, why that happened, why we didn't see... Um, most people taking shelter in the fixed income market was because if you look at um, the, the largest investors in the fixed income market, it's uh, mostly divided between um, commercial banks, uh, insurance companies, and fund managers. Um, retailers make up a very, retailers and other investors make up a very small percentage of this. And during, the, during 20, 2010, actually, most of 2010, a lot of um, these institutions took up positions in these bonds um, or when, as they were riding the wave down. All, I mean, the market, for example, for a 15-year was went down all the way to almost 5%. So what happened is once the rate started rising, uh, most, most people have shied, out, shied away from this. And um, buying up any other fixed income instruments would affect your whole portfolio. So what we've seen is, more, because of the certainty and uncertainty in rates, most um, investors have chosen to stay at the short end and in the money mm -hmm. market, which, which is actually, I mean, expected. Uh, I mean, you're not going to go in and buy a 20-year paper and burn up the rest of your portfolio. Yeah, absolutely. Let's talk about rates we're seeing on the interbank side, apparently risen by 33%. What does that mean for the CBK and for the banks that are looking for uh, lending on the overnight window and some of those platforms offered by the central bank? Um, I think at some point something will have to give. Some of these rates are quite unrealistic. They can't hold um, with interbank trading at levels of above 30% and um, uh, deposits uh, coming in at levels of 20% and above. Um, I don't think this can hold for, for quite for, for a while. Um, one way or another, we might see liquidity come into the market, not through traditional sources such as repo, but for example, last week we saw the, the interbank rate let off somewhat when um, the government disbursements came out, such as the Constituency Development Fund and other ministry funds. Um, the interbank let off somewhat, although, I mean, it's, it's shot up back again, but uh, the situation can't hold for long. Uh, in fact, what we're seeing is a lot of people are locking in deposits of uh, three to six months because they didn't expect this situation to hold mm. to the first quarter of next year. Very briefly, uh, the central bank has its monetary policy committee meeting next week. At the last one, we saw a very aggressive rate hike of 400 basis points. Are we expecting them to move in the same uh, tack this time around? Um, I'm, uh, I actually don't think so. I mean, um, I hate 
comment on this and maybe be wrong, <laughs> but um, I don't think they'll, I think they'll leave it where it is. The effect is being felt across the board. We're seeing the base lending rate, the average base lending rate has risen all the way from about 14% in September up to 24% now uh, across the board, which is, I mean, that's about uh, 10%. So we're also seeing um, credit has really shrunk. So I think they may hold it where it is. We expect uh, uh, GDP growth to come off. And I don't think they would want this to contract any further than they already expected to.